the great teacher of China was Confucius. The story has it that as a young man, he went through a period of intense meditation on what he should do with his life. He began having recurring dreams about the Duke of Chao, one of the legendary patriarchs of China, the embodiment of wisdom and virtue. Confucius believed these dreams were sending him a message. He was to revive the ancient ways and the classics from which they could be learned. This was to be his most enduring legacy. It is a great story, but as I read it, I kept hearing... No, not from dreams. Lord, where did Confucius get his inspiration? He got it from his sense of fittingness. For him, duty was a kind of fittingness. It was fitting that a son pay appropriate honors to his father. This is something the young Confucius, raised by his widowed mother, had managed to do in spite of great difficulties in even locating where his father had been buried. It was fitting in an almost literal sense, like putting the square peg in the square hole, or putting each puzzle piece exactly where it goes without forcing it. It is the fittingness of an artisan, a craftsman, who knows, who virtually sees where each piece should go, where the edges need to be smoothed, where the joints need to be fitted together. He saw society in that way and was a craftsman of society. If fathers behave fittingly toward their sons and vice versa, and husbands to their wives and kings to their subjects and so forth, then all the pieces would fit without being forced. You can understand his sayings in this light. You call the Chinese approach aesthetic, and that is not wrong, but aesthetic means many things. And for Confucius, it means the aesthetics of the master craftsman writ large. Confucius describes the superior person, quote, In seeing, he is careful to see clearly. In hearing, he is careful to hear distinctly. In his looks, he is careful to be kindly. In his manner, to be respectful. In his words, to be loyal. In his work, to be diligent. End quote. Proper behavior cannot be achieved by conforming to a general rule. One must pay careful attention to the situation and adjust behavior in the most fitting way. For, in the Confucian version of the Golden Mean, Quote, to go too far is as bad as not to go far enough. End quote. Words should fit deeds with neither excessive pride nor false modesty. What to say, or whether to speak at all, depends on what words or silences are fitting to the person and the situation. Quote, not to talk about the way to one who could be talked to is to waste a man. To talk to those who cannot be talked to is to waste one's words. End quote. Confucius presented one version of the way. There was another presented by his older contemporary, Lao Tzu. <laughs> 